Last year, around this time period, I made a video in which I talked about the year that had been and made some predictions for the year to come. That video was honestly not very good. I was running into technical issues in the production of it and I felt burnt out, which contributed to a general lackluster presentation and it just not being up to spec. With that said, I do like the concept of the video. You see, the time period between Christmas and New Year's Eve has always been a time period of reflection for me. A time period in which I look back at the year, see how things went and where I want to go in the future. I also made a few predictions in that video last year. And I suppose you get to call me Pimpsterdamus because I aced more than a few predictions. <laughs> In all honesty though, you do not need to have psychic powers to predict some of the things that I mentioned in my video, since the evidence was kind of plain for everyone to see. Although I managed to predict some things right, the manner in which these came to fruition came as a big surprise to me. I suppose I tend to have an optimistic streak sometimes, which often comes back to bite me when things end up being way worse than I anticipated. Yeah, not gonna lie, 2021 was a rough year. We are still dealing with this pandemic and, it, and this has caused a lot of social unrest globally. It has become very clear to more and more people that most governments and companies are unable to really deal with an event of this magnitude and their incompetence, plus the way our capitalist society works, has proven to be at best insufficient in dealing with the pandemic and at worst has only made things worse. Yay! So I want to look back at some of the predictions I made last year and see how many of them have come to fruition and how many of them didn't, along with making some new predictions for the next year. Let's make this a yearly thing. Pimp Sodamus predicts the new year. Let's start with the first prediction I made. That 2021 was going to be controlled by the pandemic for at least the first six months. This definitely came true, but not in the way I anticipated. I severely overestimated our ability to deal with this pandemic. And I predicted that we would only suffer from, the, from this for roughly the first six months of the year, till we all got our vaccine shots. I was a fool to think that. First off, you can basically switch 6 months to 8 months for most people, and many people, especially in the global south, still haven't gotten their vaccines yet, because western countries were hoarding, were hoarding all of them for themselves. Honestly though, I feel ashamed to be living in the Netherlands with how we hoarded the vaccines. Also, fuck medical companies for keeping their patents for themselves, instead of making everything open. If vaccine patents weren't so goddamn closed off, then we might have gotten the vaccine out way earlier, and poor countries would have had more access to them as well. Regarding vaccines though, I feel that I severely overestimated their ability to deal with the pandemic. A lot of governments are banking on vaccines for making the pandemic go away, but I realize now that vaccines don't necessarily stop a pandemic on their own. There needs to be a lot more action taken for that to happen, like just keeping everyone in sight to prevent it from spreading, and making kids wear face masks so they have a reduced chance of taking the virus with them from school to home. Vaccines are definitely helpful in reducing infections, but the Dutch government has really overestimated its ability to do so. As a result, they basically followed a policy of constantly reopening and closing the country to quote, save the economy. But this has only done more harm to the economy and, more importantly, it has also really fucked with people's trust in the government. Because the government kept changing policy so frequently that no one has a clue which policy is what anymore. How can you expect people to follow government policy if even the government themselves has no idea what the hell they are doing? Speaking of which, the year was barely 6 days old when the attack on the Capitol building happened in Washington DC. When I said that Trump had to be dragged out kicking and screaming, I did not imagine it going like this. January in general seems to have been riot season, since we had a truckload of covert curfew law riots in the Netherlands at the end of January, 
and again in November. A subject on which I made a video about earlier this year. In general, people's trust in the government has plummeted through the floor. And while I hate the conspiracy spewing anti-vaxxers as much as your average leftist, I cannot say that I don't understand where they're coming from. Speaking for the Netherlands only here, like I've been doing this entire video already, our government's COVID response has been abysmal in both 2020 and 2021. They have been constantly opening and closing the country, and honestly everyone is just done with this crap and just wants to move on with their life. This has also caused quite a lot of fear and doubt in people, and the far right has been more than eager to capitalize on that. There have been more than a few riots since January over here, often egged on by far-right agitators. And needless to say, is civil unrest something that has become the order of the day? The big issue with this is that this has only given law enforcement and politicians in general more incentive to crack down on any kind of protest. After all, your average liberal politician probably cannot tell the difference between an anarchist black bloc and a far-right fascist march. One prediction that also came true was the general election of March. I predicted that the far-right parties of the PVV and FVD would grow and I was right. VVD, aka the Liberals, also remained the largest political party, as predicted, and the major left-wing parties like the SP, PVDA and GroenLinks all suffered defeat or lost seats. Unlike my prediction, did PVDA not lose seats, but it did not gain any either, so for them it has been mostly damage control. In general, were the general elections in March kind of a shit show for the left. Though we have a silver lining in getting the most left-wing party of the country, Bijeen, in the House of Representatives with one seat. So it was not all bad, I guess. Something I did not predict was the fact that it would take so long for a government to form. The elections were in March, and at the time of writing is it early December, and we still don't have a coalition. There has been a lot of controversies and a huge amount of headaches regarding the formation of this coalition, but it will most likely turn into another VVD-led center-right coalition, with the Liberals, two flavors of Conservatives and the centrist D66. D Keep in mind that this is, at the time of writing, a still developing story, and if things change before this video goes live, then I will update this accordingly. Hey, Pim from the future here, and I'm here to tell you that yeah, we finally have a coalition accord after 11 months. And my prediction was correct, it's gonna be another one of those center-right coalitions like I predicted. Um, I have read through a summary of the coalition accord, and honestly it's kind of garbage. I cannot believe that we had to wait 11 months for this. Um, but it's also a bit too much for me to go into right now for this video. So here's what I will do. I will be writing an, an article on my blog in which I basically dissect this coalition accord and I will be posting that in a pinned comment in this video for when this video finally goes live. So if you want to know more about my thoughts regarding the new Dutch coalition, um, you can read that if you want to. Anyway, back to our feature presentation. One thing I did not predict, even though it was honestly inevitable, were the climate issues. We have been hurtling ourselves down the stairs of environmental collapse for at least 50 plus years now, and we are now reaching the point where nature is starting to push back. This has culminated into a series of extreme weather and natural disasters that honestly would be too much to list. But some of the highlights include stuff like the River Meuse flooding over here and basically putting large parts of Switzerland, Germany, Belgium and the Southern Netherlands underwater. This was apparently part of a larger series of river floods happening in Europe. The Netherlands got off relatively decently with only two or so larger towns being flooded, but eastern Belgium and western Germany had entire villages and towns just being wiped off the map. Furthermore, 
had the Western United States and Canada a few weeks in summer where the heat records were basically broken on a daily basis, resulting in major forest fires that also wiped more than a few villages and towns from the map. Finally, there was also the huge snowstorm in Texas that caused a major power outage, mostly due to the Texan state government and power companies neglecting to maintain their power infrastructure properly and caused a lot of problems for the people living there. I think that this all shows that climate change is a global problem that needs to be tackled by the entire global community. Which leaves my final predictions regarding my personal life. So I am pleased to report that my mental health has stabilized somewhat in regards to the year before. I would not say that I'm always in the best of places sometimes, but I've gotten a lot better at recognizing the signs of when things go wrong mentally speaking, and I know now how to act accordingly. I did some EMDR therapy early this year, and although it was not as good as I had hoped it would be, I would not exactly call it a waste of time either. Still kind of a shame I had to wait two and a half years for it, but that is neoliberalism for you. Someone just please get these assholes out of office. I just want some good mental health care. <laughs> Unfortunately, my plan to create a Dutch language video series kind of fell to the floor. I had issues getting the script right and honestly, I doubted it would have been very interesting. With that said, I did get involved with the Dutch grassroots activism world for a short time period and I honestly do not regret doing that. It was a very educational experience and enlightening experience, even though I ultimately came to the conclusion that demonstrations and protests are just not really in the cards for me. I also got to meet a lot of new people, both IRL and online, and I'm glad that I did. Overall, this has been a year of ups and downs, and while the ups were never really that high, the downs were not really that low as they used to be either. So, what will the future bring? Pimpsterdamus shall predicts the following. I think that the civil unrest will only increase, in le at least in the Netherlands. The new government hasn't even been made yet, but it's already extremely unpopular. I think that there's a big chance we might see another motion of no confidence against the new coalition government that is still in the process of forming somewhere this month. If this happens, it means we will need to go back to voting, and who knows what that will bring. We are also getting municipal elections next year, and although I'm hoping that we can finally kick out that local far-right populist party where I live, I doubt that this will happen since Dutch people are often extremely reactionary. As for the pandemic, I have a sneaky suspicion that this pandemic will become endemic meaning that it will become a yearly thing, kind of like the flu. In which case, it basically becomes a matter of damage control, getting a shot every year to prevent dying or permanent lung damage. I sincerely hope that we will be getting to the point where we can go relatively back to a pre-COVID world, but I doubt that that point will happen next year. I think at this point our effort will become less on destroying the pandemic but rather managing it to a point that it, that it is not harmful anymore. Again though, I doubt that this will happen anytime soon and if the governments of the world keep having these awful COVID policies, then this might take a long time. Finally, the climate. So this will be difficult to predict since I am not a climatologist, but I think that these extreme weather patterns will become more common and that stuff like floods and forest fires will become more frequent. It remains to be seen exactly how and what this will go, but I sincerely hope that the governments in the world will realize that this is something they cannot put off forever. This is, this is especially prudent for the Netherlands, which lies roughly 40% below sea level, which also happens to be the most densely populated part of the country. Yeah, stuff is kind of rough. As for myself? I recently made some minor changes in the way that I make videos. I banished a lot of the heavy stuff that's difficult to make and visualize to the shadow realm that is my block, and I will probably keep on doing this. Honestly, I just find it a lot easier to write a lot of these heavy subjects out as articles, rather than making them into videos. 
as you can probably notice in the background image of this video, I also picked up 3D modeling again. And I want to keep on doing this. Who knows, maybe I will create a 3D animation at some point. As for content on this channel, I will be going back to my self-help guide based approach for videos, like back when I started. And I think I might also throw in some more historical videos, since those seem to be pretty popular. Generally speaking though, I'm quite happy with the way the channel is going for me, and I want to keep this up for next year. So yeah, that wraps up my obligatory end of the year video. What do you think? Do you think my predictions were correct, or do you think that I completely missed the mark? And what are your own predictions? Let me know in the comments. I hope things will improve for everyone. Life is rough right now, but as some people say, hard times don't last, but people, however, people always do. I want to wish you all a happy holidays and a happy new year, and thank you all for watching.